You ever wondered what it's like to fail in life? Well, Gail Borden, a Texas inventor, didn't have to wonder. His life was filled with failure. This is one thing that separated him from everyone else, his ability to not give up. He always pushed forward, always pushed ahead, and never looked back. Hi, I am Justin Goodart, and this is Texas Live. Gail Borden's list of misses is fairly long. He tried inventing an amphibious wagon. When you came to a body of water, you would unhitch your horse, lift a sail, and go splashing right along. On its first trial, the wagon proved unstable in the wind and capsized. So what did Borden do after he failed at inventing his wagon boat? You guessed it. He tried something new. His next creation was his famous meat biscuit. Well, famous for the wrong reasons. His biscuits were made of dehydrated meat and flour. I'm sure you guessed why they didn't sell. That's right, they tasted horrible. Now, imagine yourself in his shoes at this point. Your first ever invention failed miserably, and now the second one that you worked on very hard also failed? Are you a little upset? Yeah, I would be too. But then he made one more invention. Condensed milk. Unlike the other two inventions he made, this one really took off. In fact, it's in grocery stores today. Borden is a household name in dairy products. Now, Gail Borden wasn't always an inventor. In fact, he didn't start tinkering around until the 1840s. But like many people in Texas, he was an immigrant. He was born in New York in 1801, but moved, moved west with his family when he was 12, finally settling in Indiana. However, just like me, he didn't like being up north. So he moved down to Mississippi in his late 20s. After teaching school there, he headed to Texas in 1829 to join his brother, Thomas, who was one of Stephen F. Austin's old 300 colonists. Texas was still part of Mexico at the time. Gail Borden, like so many American immigrants to Texas at the time, tried his hand at making money any way that he could. He raised cattle on a ranch in Fort Bend County, then took over as the official land surveyor for newcomers coming to the region. Then, troubles with Mexico led to the Texas Revolution, and Borden was in the middle of it all. He and some partners started a newspaper, the Telegraph and Texas Register, to spur on the cause. If he was alive today, he probably would have been YouTube, Instagram, or even Twitter famous. After Texas won its independence, he sold his share in the newspaper and took a good-paying government job, collecting taxes at Galveston. He also helped develop the city of Galveston and sold lots for new houses and encouraged people to move there. Eventually, he owned a lot of land in Texas. Galveston has a beach, right? So why not try out a wind-driven wagon that you could roll along in the sand and before making a sharp turn and then heading out to sea? Well, it sounded better than it worked out to be. In his 40s is when he got serious about his inventions. What about a thick cracker made from dehydrated meat mixed with flour to make a portable food that wouldn't spoil? Another famous Texan, Dr. Ashbold Smith, loved the idea and was his partner on the meat biscuit idea, but it wasn't going anywhere. When Borden turned 50, he moved to New York City to try and sell his meat biscuits there. It was a gold medal winner in a contest in London, and the U.S. Army tried them out as rations for the soldiers on the frontier. Everyone loved the idea of meat biscuits, but no one loved the way that they tasted or looked. Borden had sold most of his land to finance his inventing and went broke in 1855. He ran out of money and gave up inventing. Then Borden started thinking about milk. While still trying to sell his meat biscuit idea, Borden had also experimented with preserving milk, which, in the time before refrigerators, often spoiled in a few days. Borden figured out how to evaporate and condense milk, then put it in cans so that it could stay on the shelf for a long time. This genius idea attracted people willing to give Borden money to build a factory in Northwest Connecticut, just like where I'm from. But buyers still didn't seem to like his canned milk until the American Civil War. Union soldiers could not get enough of the stuff. Pretty soon, Borden had four factories, two in Connecticut, two in New York, and one in Illinois. He also invented ways to preserve and can fruit juice, coffee, and meat broth. By the time the war was over, Borden was rich. In his later years, he spent time between New York, where he spent his, the summers, and Texas, where he spent the winters. 
Now, the place he had in Texas where most of his family still lived. Borden built a meat packing plant near Bastrop and a sawmill and copper cook cookware company in Bordenville, a town he founded near Columbus, Texas. He also used his fortune to help educate African American Texans who were emerging from the dark days of slavery. He also supported efforts of the Baptist Church. He died on January 11th, 1874, having lived an amazing Texas life. Um.